Hey Michael with X-Force PC, I've got three 4K TVs behind me and many of you have asked in the past, you know, hey I want to be able to run three 4K displays hooked up to one machine and just get great frame rate with X-Plane and everything be wonderful and have my objects turned up really high and my anti-aliasing cranked up. Well it's simply not possible. In fact, one machine gets put to pretty hard work to do that on one 4K display. So what I've done is I've actually hooked up a computer to each of these displays. So this is about each of these computers is about a $1700, $1800 computer. It's got an i7 um, with like a GTX 1070 Ti for the graphics. So you know not crazy high-end specs but fairly high-end. Um, so you're looking at you know four or five thousand in, in computers if you do it this way. But what this allows you to do is have three 4K displays with the settings cranked up really really high and still get really good frame rate. So we'll talk about how we did that and how we're going to do that. Now the first thing you have to do is get them on the same, the three computers on the same network. And you want that to be a wired network, not a wireless network. So you may have to actually, um, if you just have one network drop run to your room, you may need to get a little inexpensive switch, they're like $25, $30, and then plug all three computers into that switch. The reason you don't want to use Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi has too much latency, and if you bank the wings fairly aggressively, you'll see the side display sort of stutter, because these three computers are staying in sync with each other, by talking to each other over the network and it's very important that the network latency be very low and you need a wired network to be able to do that. The other a few other things I'll point out um, you want to run 4k at 60 Hertz on these TVs and in my case when I tried to run 4k at 60 Hertz I got all kinds of horrible noise and artifacts on the screen I mean it looked horrible and so what I did is I went into the menu system and I downloaded the latest firmware for the TV. You just, you know, go into the menu system with your remote control and attach it to your Wi-Fi and then just tell the TV to check for updates. It downloaded the update, took like three or four minutes, and then I was able to run all three TVs at 60 Hertz 4K. The other thing you want to do is set the scaling the same on all three. This just makes things a whole lot easier if you, if you do this. I'll have all these set to 100% scaling. That's within Windows. So just make sure your desktop's set the same. Your resolution, you know, 3840 by 2160 if, if we're talking about 4K. 60 hertz for the refresh rate. That means 60 times per second the screen gets redrawn. 100% uh, scaling and then you should be pretty good to go. Um, you want to make sure you have the same version of X-Plane on all three computers, so that's pretty important. And um, the last thing is um, you're either going to have to have three keyboards and three mice, or I'm using a program that's working pretty well called Synergy. And what Synergy does is it allows you to share the keyboard and mouse on the main computer with the two side computers. So I drag my mouse over to the edge, and in theory, it seamlessly switches over to this, this one over here, and vice versa. When I go this way, it moves over to that one. It's been a little herky-jerky in X-Plane because, um, I guess because X-Plane's running full screen, but... I am able to make it work. It is still better than having three separate keyboards and three separate mice. Currently the pricing on Synergy is $29. So that's sort of the, the kind of get you started and then we'll talk about you know all the nuts and bolts here in just a second. So one thing that's pretty important before you start doing this networked setup is you need to give each computer a meaningful name because when you pull it up in X-Plane uh, what you're going to see is the computer name, and by if you don't specify a computer name, Windows gives a random gobbledygook kind of uh, PC name that doesn't really make much sense. So what you do is, um, at least currently until Windows moves this around again, you go to Settings, and you go to System, and I will uh, adjust here just a bit so you can see that a little bit better. Um, 
and then you go down to About, and then rename this PC. Now, I already have a good name for this PC because I've already done it, but you just type in whatever name you want to have there, hit Next, and it will have to do a reboot. So uh, what you'd probably want to do is name your middle display, middle or center, and name your left, not display, sorry, computer. Just I'd just call it left and name the right computer right. And then that way when we go into X-Plane and we take a look at how to network these things, it'll be a whole lot easier to do. Okay, so uh, the first thing we want to do is go into X-Plane's settings. One thing I'll mention, um, you need to make sure that the Windows firewall is not blocking your communications. You also want to make sure any other firewalls you have are not blocking communications. And lastly, you want to make sure that uh, each computer is set to a home network, not a public network. And that's in the network settings. So make sure you're on a private or home network, not a public network. If you're on a public network, Windows puts a lot of roadblocks up for network communication because they think you're in a public place where someone could hack your machine. So again, private network, not public. Um, the other thing you want to do is make sure your rendering options are the same on each machine. At least that would be my recommendation. Um, I wouldn't want my rendering options to be different. Notice I've got them turned up pretty doggone high because each computer is having to render only one 4K display. Now, um, next I'm going to head over to the network setup. And this machine is going to be the master, and so it'll already be defaulted to master. The master, of course, is the computer that tells the other two computers what to do and what to show. If you have any ex external visuals set up, that'll be under here, where it says external visuals, and you see I have the computer called right already showing up. And then there's left as well. I'm having trouble because my mouse is so far away from the computer. Now I can click on left and hit add external visual. So I have left and right now. And then I have my transmissions per second set up to 60. So this this will see any other computers running X-Plane on the network. So um, it makes it pretty easy in that regard. So these are both set to master. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to each of the side computers and tell them to be external visuals. They're the, the slaves, I guess you would call them. Okay, now I'm on the left side machine. And so I'm going to go under Network. And under um, this machine's role, I'm going to choose an external visual. And the master machine is the ultimate system, which it, it is already set to. So now we're good to go. And you see it just adjusted itself, and we are now looking at the same exact thing on all three displays, all three, di or, excuse me, all three computers are now talking to each other. So the next thing we have to do is set up our field of view. Now on each display, I've elected to go with 60 degrees of lateral view to give me a total of 180. And of course, 180 is exactly half of a circle. I'm sure you know that. Um, so under graphics, on this screen, you see I've got, or maybe it's hard to read, but um, I'll zoom in just a little bit. But I've got it set to lateral field of view of 60. That means for my lateral offset on the left monitor, I need to set that to negative 60. I'm going to say 0 0.5 because I'm going to add a little bit of extra for bezel correction. And you see what just happened there? Maybe you can't because I haven't zoomed out yet. Look how we have now a connection here. They almost are perfect. And that was 60, negative 60.5 on my lateral rotation offset on this left display. There we go. We kind of sync up. And look at that. Everything is just about perfect on that left display. So now we'll go over to the right display. 
All right, now we're over on the right display, and as you can see, the, you know, this is our center one, and the right display is basically showing the exact same thing, and sorry, there's some glare on there. So what we need to do is go back to uh, settings and network again, and we need to make sure our role is set correctly. And this machine is not a master. This is, the, this is an external visual and we make sure the master machine shows the right one, and it does. So we're good there. Now, uh, so when I hit done here, you'll see them kind of sync up. See that? Now they're all synced up. Um, but I'm gonna go up here to the graphics settings and make sure my lateral field of view still says 60, and it does. And for my lateral offset, on the left screen, I put in negative 60.5. On the right screen, I'm going to put in positive 60.5. Because we want to rotate this view 60.5 degrees to the right. And there it is. And I'm just going to hit done here. And there we go. So let's zoom out. And you see this is my right display now. And there's the center. And then the left. That's left is at a pretty extreme angle, so it might be a little hard to see. But now we have all three computers talking, and they are all uh, running one display each. So now we just need to take this thing up for a test flight and see about our responsiveness. One thing I want to mention to you, I'm going to just kind of shoehorn this in the middle of the video, is if you go on the master machine and you go to the network settings and you look, you will see all of the various network connections. And you can see here that we've got, uh, we're sending data to a control pad, which is basically an iPad running control pad, which can act as a, an instructor station. Uh, I guess one of our iPads around here is running control pad right now. But then the most important thing is we see external visual machine two and external visual machine one, we're sending data to, and you can see right below that that we're receiving data as well. You can also see this machine's IP address if for some reason you needed to see that. And then over here, you know, on the left side, you'll see where we, we chose the two external visuals, left and right. And again, those names, left and right, that's what I name those computers in Windows. That's their computer name in Windows. And so that makes it a whole lot easier if you name your computer something useful like that. Okay, so here we are. Um, we've got all three of the machines talking to each other, and I just want to show you how some of the stuff acts a little differently. I'm going to change my location here, and I'm going to start a new flight in a new location. And one thing you'll notice is the center machine, the master machine, will go to that new location. Then once it's at that new location, it will then tell the two side displays, hey, come with me, get over here. And you see, they will sync up. And they are now ready to go. So that's something that's just a little bit different. Um, let's see if I can take off without making too big of a mess of it. I'm not the greatest pilot in the world. We're just in the Cessna 172. Now in here, you can pan all around, you know, and it flows between the displays and probably about to run off the runway. Um, and that works really nicely. And we're, you know, running again at 4K. We have our anti-aliasing turned up really high. We have um, the objects turned up really high. And we're getting 30-something frames per second on the side screens at about 50 on the middle one. The 50 on the middle one is probably because I have a 1080 in there, and the two side ones have 1070s. So um, probably better to go, if you're going to do 4K, to just go with at least a 1080 in each machine. Now you will notice some slight lag. If you bank the wings hard and you look in the corners there, you can see some slight lagginess of the horizon. 
Um, that's always been there in a networked X-Plane setup. Um, but generally, you know, if you're flying like you're supposed to fly, um, you know, you're, you're banking the wings at a more reasonable rate and, um, and you're not having those issues. Although, I'm not quite sure what just happened. My uh, yoke disconnected there for a second. Um, sorry about the bad flying. Um, something's going on with my USB hub. It keeps coming and going. But anyway, there is, uh, that's how you set up the networked uh, scenery with external visuals with X-Plane 11.